Hi there, thanks for joining me. Today I want to go over five tips that will be helpful in um, learning sew art better in making better images and stuff. So this might be a little bit long of a video and I'm really sorry, but it will be helpful. And um, I'm going to try to go through it as quick as I can. And I'm really sorry if I go too fast. Please pause and write stuff down if you need to. There's only going to be five tips in this video and they're going to be pretty simple tips. The very first one is to come to SNS Computing, go to Shop, go to the Sew Art page. I just clicked on it and I'm already here, but go to the Sew Art page. This page is going to be all about Sew Art. Okay, it's going to tell you the image types, um, vector images, and clip art into embroidery file images. Okay, right here, if you have a registration code or you want to download the demo. Here's where you do so for Windows and for Mac. And here's where you download the manual. This is my number one tip. Download your manual and read it, okay? And I will say as a hypocrite, I have not finished reading mine or even barely dipped into it. Um, so it is what it is, but I just wanted to tell you guys that is probably going to be the number one tip um, to get better at this, I have a hard time sitting and reading really technical documents. So I just bump through it. You'll see if you've watched any of my videos, I just bump through it. So if you're like me and you bump through it, downloading the manual is not going to be the best, but it really should be done. That's going to be the number one tip. And you just download it here. Okay. And if I were you, I would save it on your desktop if you use SOAR a lot or save it in the SNS program file. Um, also, on this page, this is where you can purchase it if you want to purchase it. And they also offer international support in different languages. This will give you more information about its features. So even if you're already a um, seasoned SOART user, coming back and reading back here sometimes is helpful because they update it as they update the program the software and stuff. And also you might not have understood something at the beginning and you come back and now it makes more sense. So just come back and check every once in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they have a whole thing about getting started. And then down here is my second tip. My second tip is go to YouTube or come on here. Start here if you're already here. And this is a slide show of I'm not sure if it's all the videos on YouTube that are so art related, but it's a good handful of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a lot of them are not my videos. They're made by different people. All of these are made by different people. And this is Burly So. That is one of mine. But then the ones that you really want to watch. That was my first one ever, and it gives a lot of information about doing handwriting. This is an updated one I did, but I still think my first one was better. So is what it is. Um, in the hoop bookmarks, oh look, you can grab it and pull it. Okay, oops, I didn't wanna do that. All right, so the ones I want you to see are not mine at all, ironically. <laughs> Come on, right here. These ones that are blue with the white writing, these are from Maya Tweston. She's also the admin at the Sew Art Digitizing Group on Facebook. And um, these are all really good videos to help you get um, understanding Sew Art in a much more technical way. I kind of fumble and completely mumble when I'm trying to figure stuff out and teach other people. And her stuff is very um, easy to follow and in depth. So I would go onto YouTube or go here and look up videos and just sit around and watch videos for a while. Even if you don't want to make any of these things, watch them because sometimes there's going to be information offered in this one that you're not going to get in this one or, you know, and so on. So yeah. So that is my second tip, go onto YouTube. First tip is to read your manual. Second is to go on YouTube, watch videos about how easy it is um, or hard it is. A lot of people struggle with a lot of it, myself included. 
I am not by any means a professional digitizer or professional teacher. I just stumble through and figure it out. And then I turn around and I share it with you guys. That's all that's going on over here. So um, let's move on to the third tip. And we're going to open up in SoArt right now. Okay. So one of my first tips is going to be to lower your colors. When you have an image in here, you're going to choose this palette here. It looks like an artist's palette. It says color reduction. And usually when you bring stuff in, it's going to have about 250 colors if it's a JPG. Um, if it's an F SVG, it will come in with the colors it's been designed with. So I prefer using SVGs, but for high color stuff, it's not that easy for me to convert yet. I haven't figured that out. So um, if you are good at converting SVGs and you can break it up and, and layer them all back together in so art, that would be cool. I just don't know how to do that yet. But so uh, or so art does let you reduce colors of anything that you do bring in. So let's bring in something just as an example. And sometimes things you design in paint comes up with the colors that you design. So I don't really know why things do what they do, but this is a PNG file and it's pretty big. So let's open it and see. All right, it's going to scale it down for me. And it looks simple enough to us, right? There's white, pink, black, and purple. And in most cases, when I click on this, it's going to give me over 200 colors. So what happens is when you create it in one program and it has to basically recreate itself in SoArt, it rejuggles all of the pixels and all of that weird stuff that I am no good at explaining, but that's how I envision it is all happening um, and comes back to us with all these colors. So we can go straight to saying, hey, there's only four colors here, right? And then you're like, oh my gosh, what just happened to my thing? So what you have to do is kind of go down gradually. Okay, so go down to 100 maybe. And now go down to 50. And then just keep going down until, oops, well, that's another option. That's a whole nother option for doing it, but I just want to stick with the easy one right now. You can do the merge colors things, which is really helpful tool, but it takes a bit to understand and I'm still figuring it out. Okay, so down to 10 colors. And notice how it turned the back, the white pink back there. And this is a little bit different color purple. So we want it to go to four colors now. Will it let us? Nope, it will not let us without blinking out our thing. So let's go to five colors. Still. And I know that this seems tedious. And it is tedious. So 10 is our max. Okay, so we've reduced our colors. Now let's go into our merge colors. Okay, so we know that these colors are all too close to each other, but we know that there's only one black. So let's go in and make sure that we're only seeing one black. So this dark color is just, see these? Dot, 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 dot. We are going to merge them. And then this seven. That's all just dots too. We're going to merge it. We can merge a range, but that gets rid of your control. Okay. You can also choose Dispeckle. Dispeckle will, will merge it as well. So it, it does a different function, yes, but <laughs> Dispeckle is more for this situation where you have your purples, but you don't need all this extra stuff. So let's despeckle. Okay, so that got rid of all that extra stuff. If it did miss anything, we could just use this as an eraser. Okay, so let's go to our gray, which we know we shouldn't have. Right, so let's merge that. And now we should have four colors. We should have our black, our purple, our pink and then our white 
Oh, and look at the pink. The pink is super speckly. So let's despeckle it. Okay. And then that's supposed to be our white, but obviously it's not white anymore. Okay, so we're done with the color. So we had 255 colors to start with. Now we have four. And then the final part of reducing the colors, for me, I always like to go into the so art colors and refill everything with the so art colors. Then I can get it back to how I started. So there we go. So now we have four colors that we can then go and stitch. All right, so my next tip about that and going with the whole control part is um, digitize everything as manually as possible. The wizard is a great tool. That's not the wizard. <laughs> the wizard is a great tool. Um, and it'll help you get to learn so art on photos and bigger projects like that. But it's always, almost always better to do everything yourself. This wizard basically is doing everything that you would be able to control down here yourself. And you don't always get the same kind of results. I have a whole video on using the automatic functions um, as well as, actually, I don't think I have one about digitizing manually. But that's my third tip, digitize manually. So now we have our 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 thing already, right? And we're gonna go over here to the stitch image button. This is where we go to create our embroidery file. Okay, right now it's still a picture. And so in here, we're going to choose our stitch. Our fill is going to be a default, but if you choose this, there's a bunch of fills that you could have in here. This is black, so none of these are gonna show. So I'm gonna stay with the default. And you just wanna click where you want it to start. Trying to start at the top is almost always the best for me. You want to play around and you want to, you know, make a lot of mistakes, make a lot of, um, you know, trials and demos and stuff like that. Figure out what it is that you like. That's the only reason I have any of this stuff figured out is because I tried it. So um, that's the default for this one. Let's also go ahead and default this pink and we want to have it stitch out the the biggest ones first okay like the bottom one and then we'll have this pink lay on top of the black basically it'll still give us an opening it'll be a white opening here or whatever your fabric is it'll be opening but it'll stitch this on so it'll be over the top of the edges of these black ones and that's basically what's going to happen for all of these so then we're going to check this part then it's going to skip over here and check this heart. You will have a jump stitch. It will. You will have a jump stitch. So you will have to trim right there. Okay. And then it's going to come over here to your star. We want it to fill in the star. Okay. But say we're going to do a patch. And that's not something you can do in the wizard. And it's not really something you can do. Uh, I didn't mean to push that. No, gosh, I hate that. Okay, so that was really annoying. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to put a patch, um, put a satin stitch around the edge of this, right? So we can't do that in auto sew, and we can't do that in the wizard. That's something we have to do manually. And it's another thing that I like being able to use SoR for. So um, if you want it to be an applique where it'll do three different steps, you choose applique border. If you um, want it to just do one single outline stitch, you're gonna choose outline, center line, or outline border. For this case, we're gonna do outline border. It's going to border all around the outside of this heart. And I really just wanted to border this. And so I have to take it into sew art and get rid of those stitches around the edge. But this is how you do it. So you just grab your outline center line, come over here and choose the satin stitch. 
You want your height to be big. So 40 is a big, fat, fluffy one. And you want your length to be very small. You want it to do a stitch and then do a stitch right next to it. You don't want to play around. Unless you're doing a zigzag, then you can make the length bigger. So let's go ahead and just click right on the top. And with satin stitch, you want to click on a flat spot to seed and end. That gives it um, a better looking finishing. Whenever it's on a corner or it's on the jagged part here, you're going to get one that sticks up and then it's going to have a little space in between and then it's going to come at a different angle because it's got a different way to go going down. I hope that that makes sense. This is going to take a little while because it's so big. Oops, I guess I didn't choose outline border. So if you mess up, click delete color <laughs> and choose outline border. 40 and one or two. I don't know that it matters that big of a difference. Okay, and you want to click inside the black. But as close to the straight edge at there, up uh, edge up there at the top as you can. Okay, so now I have my. I actually think it looks kind of cute with this stuff being bordered as well. But you might not like that. You're and if you don't like that, take it into so our or so what pro if you have so what pro, and you can delete this part of the stitch out and just have the outer edge. Another thing you can do if you want to avoid that is, um, I feel like I recently did this image, so this, well, I'll make another video if I figure it out. <laughs> All right, so that's how you would digitize manually. All of your stuff is available to you here. You have a fill stitch, outline, border, which is the one that borders everything that you click on. Outline center line, which is something that we would use on a line if there was a single line. I clicked on that one first and it just kind of went all wonky inside of here. It's because there's no line for it to follow. So applique border is the same as outline border, except you can um, you'll have three choice you'll have three steps. It'll give you your die line to show you where to put your fabric. You'll get your tack down that will show you or that will tack down the fabric that you put down. And then you'll have your finishing stitch, which is your satin, running, bean, or your inner or outer blanket stitches. I haven't played with the blanket stitches too much. Um, but in any case, manually digitizing is for me the way to go. And I feel like it will help you have a much better sense and control over what you're trying to create in Sew Art. Okay. All right. So. Along that same line, um, my, oh, I guess it's only four tips because, <laughs> well, this last one looked like it was two tips, but it's only four tips. So, so the fourth tip is going to be kind of along the same line. Let's go ahead and get out of here. No, I don't want to save it. Let's open a new one and let's make a shape. Okay, so they offer us this shape of the of the square. And it has these pointed edges. And it is possible to get decent looking pointed edges, especially if you have a really thick, um, um, what's the stabilizer underneath? you'll get really nice thick stitches that almost look like they're doing the job, but they're not really going to do the job like a, like a, some of the more, um, higher end products, digitizing products. So my tip here is to, instead choosing one like this, I would look for something with rounded corners and it doesn't look like they have anything like that in here. <laughs> They have a lot of corners that you can't achieve. So I'm making a sew art wish list. I think I'll put more rounded designs in the shapes option. Like, so this would be a nice design to do, but you're going to have funky corner pieces because we don't angle 
like unless you choose for it to go to an angle and you make these four different sides different colors and split them in half and made them even co different colors again then you can have them do separate angles but with this it's just going to kind of end here and then try to pick up around this side so um, if you aren't using shapes and you want to use a shape, I would go into your program that you're creating your shape if you're not going to use the sew art shapes and make sure that the edges are rounded. So um, like it would be just rounded like that, rounded here, rounded there. And now the other part of this tip is if you are going for a satin stitch, other than the corners, um, so it does a really nice satin stitch if you keep your lines straight and the curves really gradual. So that's how you're going to keep a really nice satin stitch in so art. The satin stitch has a lot to be desired in so art. I think that the creator is working on making it better. Um, but right now it's, it's just not the best. And a lot of people get frustrated. And every time I ask videos about um, what you need most help with, or ask questions about what people need most help with is generally the satin stitch. And so I'm just here to tell you that they're probably working on it. I'm hoping that they're working on it. I haven't bugged them about it because I don't use it that much. But if you're a satin stitch person, um, watch the video that I created about handwriting, the very first one. And then also keep in mind that if you have, like if you're trying to do something that does a lot of, has a lot of different, None of these are going to really be one, but has a lot of different stuff to do. It's um, it's not going to look good. It's going to kind of do a line here. It's going to jag over here, jag over here. So sketching and satin stitch aren't really made for each other. And the whole sketching thing, I would use the running stitch on sketches, but I haven't done sketches before. That's just kind of my idea of what they would do. So the final tip here is to round your corners and make those rounds gradual. Don't do like, you know, so art doesn't, or the, the satin stitch on here follows a line basically is all I'm getting at. It wants to follow a nice curved line, not a stop and go line. So um, curve your stuff, gradualize, you know, stuff if you have to, but try to keep your lines as perfectly straight as possible for the program to follow it. All right, so I hope that that helped. I know it wasn't um, the prettiest video and the most spectacular video, but I really hope that you guys learned something and um, that sport will be something more enjoyable to you in the future. Talk to you later. Bye.